Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Clay Ramage. Guess what? I have to adjust my glasses. We're back again with another Goodwill Bins haul. That's right, as you saw on the thumbnail. Um, went to the bins again. It's Monday morning. I usually go on Monday mornings and uh, found some great stuff. Some really incredible stuff. Met my friend Brad. He happened to be there today and uh, my new friend and so he, <laughs> he helped me find some great stuff as well. Um, I just had a great time it was uh um yeah a lot of good pickings so um if you're new to the channel welcome thank and thank you to all of my new subscribers it's been great to see how things have continued to grow on this channel to get more views and subscribers and it's super encouraging for an old man to see that people are interested in what he's finding to go out and resell either on ebay or down at our booth at the pink elephant or uh, even throwing some stuff out on Facebook Marketplace on occasion, or Craigslist. Um, sorry, I'm playing with something that I'm going to show you here in a few minutes. <laughs> Need to stop playing. So anyway, let's just get right into it. Um, yeah, a lot of this stuff um, is for resale, but I did find some stuff for personal use and that I'm going to keep, add to my collections. Um, one of the things I found was this uh, Christmas Coca-Cola mug. Um, you don't see the Christmas ones, at least I don't see them very often. Um, which is cool. It's got the, you know, holly and wreath, uh, theme around it, which was cool. And it says Coca-Cola on it too. There's a whole bunch of Coca-Cola stuff. So I think somebody must have donated their Coca-Cola collection. That was, I was going to pick up some more, but I decided against it and just picked up that one. Um, I picked up this vintage oil can um we sell a number of these down at the pink elephant so that's where this will go um and uh so yeah this is the kind of use in wizard of oz you know where they pump in oil so that's kind of cool this one is marked um dutton and made in the usa oh this is from hastings nebraska dutton lanson company hastings nebraska usa my home state sweet the goldenrod see all it says on here is aska so i don't know if that was alaska but it happens to be nebraska cool that was fun to find um this is a little tic-tac-toe game now the marble store in the end so you just twist this but it looks like somebody has taken the black there's only white marble so it's kind of hard to play tic-tac-toe there would have been black marbles originally um so Somebody's lifted the black marbles, just white marble, but it's easy enough to find co two different colored marbles to put in there. Um, but yeah, so I've sold these at the Pink Elephant. Um, they're just nice little um, games to have on your card table or coffee table or whatever. Um, I saw this, this, I just thought this little figurine was darling. Um, hand painted. It is stamped on the bottom with an Asian stamp. Um, do not know what language, what it means, or anything else, but it does, um, so yeah, but I just thought the figure was darling, so picked that up, picked up this Campbell's Soup Cup, uh, Campbell Up, um, this is of course a Thermoserve by West Bend Company, made in the USA, it is a little crusty on the inside now that I look at it, but we pay 49 cents at our bins, and Campbell Soup's you know, stuff is collectible. Um, picked up these. Brad actually showed these to me. These are, there's a set of them. There's three. There's These are horsehair brushes for polishing your shoes and whatnot. Um, the other one was here a second ago. Anyway, it'll pop up. Um, so yeah, so these are great for your shoes or you can use them for um, many different purposes. But 100% horsehair made in the USA. So these would have been expensive brushes when they were new. So I'm good with that. I'll take them from the bins. Found this vintage Santa figurine. Now this is a handmade piece. You can tell he, somebody, you know, gave him spaghetti wear, beard and hair and ruffles. And the varnish is extremely yellowed on this. So it looks yellow and it is yellow. That's from the varnish that, that was put on the outside of it. But it is signed on the bottom. Carol Lisbina, 1980. So, just thought it was cute. Um, it's got a little bell on him. 
with his little glasses. So they did a great job, I thought, making him. So that'll go down in the pink elephant to sell. I found some tennis balls, brand new in the package. Those are for me personal, so when we go out and play tennis. Um, did find some jewelry. Here's one. This is a necklace. There's a bag of jewelry around here. I think it's in this other bag. Um, and so the other thing was this beautiful antique Bible. Um, you know, with the embossed front, the gold um, patterns on the front. And this it was funny because when uh, Brad found it and showed it to me and I was like, if you don't want it, I'll take it. And so I grabbed it. And if you look at the, um, here in the front, it says, enter according to act of Congress in the year blank in the office of the Library of Congress of Washington. So, so the date is illegible. It's, there's just like a couple little black marks there. So you, you can't read what the date is. Um, but I told Brad, I'm like, oh, well, if it's truly the Bible, it would be year zero because God wrote it. So... There wouldn't be a date on it, right? <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, this is a translated self-pronouncing edition. King James self-pronouncing edition. Oh, okay. So they give the pronunciations of the names, and it's got some, you know, beautiful illustrations. In this case, some, um, you know, just black and white pictures. I really haven't even looked through this to see what all is in it, but I think it's, I just love old Bibles. So anyway, so that was a great find. And unfortunately, if you, books at our bins are 49 or 29 cents an inch. Guess what? I forgot to pull this out. So I actually paid by the pound. So I well, way overpaid for this. Um, but oh well, because it got stuck at the bottom of the cart and everything got piled on top of it. And I forgot that I didn't pull it out. So anyway, that's all right. It's still a good buy. And my antique Bibles like that are, you know, sellable and uh, have some good value. Right, Dan and Andy, these are a couple of vintage ones. These are not more modern ones. That's why I picked them up. Um, they got a good vintage feel to them. Got some dirt to them. Oh, she's losing her pants. But anyway, so I picked up a couple of these. Seems like Raggedy Ann and Andy I find a lot of that um, theme stuff at the bins. I, it's obviously not nearly as popular as it used to be, but this is a violin, obviously. Um, and it is marked, yes, that's right. It's um, Stradivarius on the inside, although it does say um, copy of. So that's kind of good. It's a copy of a 1713 Stradivarius violin. This one is actually made by the, I think it's a Glazelle shop in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and this was made in 2002, so it's not an old violin, but it still has value. There's two of these models. This is a 4 4 size violin. I used to play the violin a little bit. I tried to learn, but it was hard. But anyway, um... These are, um, two of these are sold as parts or repair for $99. Um, so even though they, when I was at the bins, they said the case was there with the bow, but we could not find it anywhere. And I talked to several other people there and nobody had seen it. So we don't really know what happened to it, but it was no longer in the bins like it should have been. So anyway, so we, um, I just left without it um, because even just the violin without the rest of it is worth something. They are going to call me if they find it. So then I can um, put it all together. But in the meantime, it's still a valuable violin for, for what it is. All right. I need to pick up. I'm talking too much. I might just sneeze. Hold on a sec. Mm, got an itch in my nose. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, must be too dusty in here. Found a couple vintage mobiles for the nursery. This one is an animal one. And I did find the winding mechanism to make it turn around and stuff for this one. I did not find 
the windy mechanism for this one. Um, you know, with the little wooden figurines. These are little angel figurines. Angels on clouds and shooting stars. And it's all tangled up. I haven't untangled it. But I just thought they were really cute. Picked them up. Now I'll be like, what do I do with them? I don't know. But we'll try to sell them. And so, yeah, this is the windy thing with the line on it. We'll put that down there. Um, and then, this reminded me of a story. I found a bag of souvenir spoons. And so I was looking briefly at it. And I pulled out a spoon. And I hear... Somebody was telling a story about me when they were shopping with Nicole, Kate. And uh, I hear that you did this thing that you reached into a thing of silver and pulled out a sterling. Well, that's exactly what I did here. I reached in there and the first spoon I pulled out said sterling on it. So I thought, okay. So I just took the whole bag. There are uh, three pieces of sterling um, spoons in here. Um, and they're all older spoons. There's a World's Fair. New York in here as well. There's a Nebraska spoon as well. So just a lot of great collectible spoons. And, and again, I probably paid a dollar fifty for the whole lot. So to me, it's worth it. Obviously, just in the value of the silver. Oh, here's another thing that was went with the uh, mobiles. And um, so yeah, that's why I do it because you know I usually get my money back with finding pieces of sterling. Yes, and did find a bag of jewelry. Brad and I were talking, so we were reaching the end of the row of bins. He's like, yeah, I didn't find any jewelry. He usually picks it up for his wife. And uh, so I was, saw the green baggie sticking out, so I just grabbed the top of the baggie, pulled it out, and of course it was jewelry. Um, and he just shakes his head. But um, yeah, there's nothing special in there. Just a lot of costume jewelry. But there were, actually, there were two watches in there. Um, one's a Seiko and one's a Buren, B-U-R-E-N, Buren. It's a 17 jewel watch, so that makes it a little more valuable. Metal base, stainless steel back. Um, you know, it's a woman's watch in good condition. Don't know if it works or not. Haven't tried it. Um, haven't tried either one, but that was a good find. Found a Vineyard Vines tie. Um, Vineyard Vines ties are expensive. This one is a, uh, it has a marlin on it and it does have a stain on the front too but not that i'm too worried about that but i uh lot these up the nicer quality like brooks brothers vineyard vines um you know hermes any of those that i might find and uh make a lot of high-end ties and sell them which i need to do because i've got enough of them now um and then i found this beautiful hand woven tray basket kind of thing uh it's still got the original tag on it which is really cool because it talks on here um uh this is made in the south pacific and then it says um i personally wove this design in one and a half days so i took the artist and he signed it i say artist because these are an art form to do these weavings and especially in this circular pattern it's really cool they did a great job on it um so yeah, it took a day and a half to make one little tray. Isn't that amazing? But it's a beautiful tray in excellent condition. So I picked it up and still got the tag. So can't beat that. That's a good marketable piece. Um, and then I found, <laughs> can you hear me now? I found an old rotary dial phone. These are actually fairly popular right now. This particular color, not so much, but other colors, absolutely. Uh, this phone is from 1964. Um, but yeah, if you've got the blue, the, you know, pale blue, pink, pink is the one to look for if you can find the pink rotary dial phone and uh, green, red, those are worth more than the tan or this off white cream. I don't know what color you would call that. And the blacks, which are more common. This is more likely an office phone, um, uh, based on the plug-in. It looks like it would plug into a main circuit panel of a, for an office. Um, but still, they'll sell down the pink elephant for twenty to thirty-five, forty dollars, depending upon on the phone. And then um, Brad actually found a couple books for me as well. These are reference books. This is a whole pottery book. Always good to have some 
reference books. And then very rare glassware of the Depression years. So uh, it's funny because I was just looking at this at another store. I think it was when we were in Des Moines and I almost bought it. But I think it was like 15 to $20 for the book. And I was like, I just can't spend that right now. So I didn't. But guess what? I found one at the bins that I probably paid 30 cents for. Aha, that's even better. And then I did buy a record. Um, there were a number of records. Most of them weren't very good, but I bought this one simply for the cover art. Look at that. Does that scream 1970s? But this one is actually made in conjunction with Sylvania um, to promote their stereo system. So that's kind of cool. So it'll walk you through all the different quality sounds that you can get out of the stereo system. Um, found this little souvenir boomerang. Um, you can see the little kangaroo in, in there. It's painted, kind of an Aboriginal style. So that was fun. And then um, I found a lot of napkins, napkins, handkerchiefs, hankies, whatever you want to call them. And uh, so I picked out, there's a number of them. Some of them I didn't bring home. Some I did, um, but I picked out what I thought were the better ones out of the lot. Some Christmas ones, some spring ones, Valentine's. So, cool. Then I found a, a, a Pokemon character. Now this particular one is from 1998. So this is an earlier version. It's not the later ones. He does need a little, he's got a lot of marks on him. It'll, should clean up fairly easily. Um, Found the Hot Wheels Silver Bullet. This is from dated 1974, Hong Kong. I think, I haven't looked it up, but I do think this one has a little bit of value to it. Um, even though it's not a red line, but. And then I found a Hot Wheels mail truck. He's been well played with. And again, if they're not very valuable, I still put them down at the Pink Elephant in, uh, in you know, mark them one to $2, depending upon value and i've sold a number of them and then i found a bunch of vintage cards so i picked them up i got a new rack down at the pink elephant for cards and magazines and stuff like that so um i thought oh i can add some more cards to their cards to there because cards are so expensive to buy them new i'm like well if i can sell them for a dollar each on the pink elephant then that's even better so happy birthday um, I don't even know what this one is. It's just a, it's not blank. It's got a saying in the middle, but it's just a card, I guess. Here's a nice spring card. Bird. A thanks from the double card. It says thanks from way down deep. <laughs> um, and again, I picked these up. These are this isn't an old one, but I just picked it up. It's a nice, you know, handcraft looking card. Um, here's an, another old vintage card. Nothing fancy. This one has a cute vintage cover to it. And again, none of these are written in. Oh, that's a Valentine's Day card. Um, another cute little rainbow card. And then a 3D Christmas card. So yeah, so I picked these up again. These right here, if I can sell them for a dollar, that's three, six, nine, twelve bucks. And I probably paid 50 cents. So to me, that's kind of a no-brainer to do that. Um, found some, oh yeah, these are for the backpacks. It's a survival blanket. You know, one of those aluminum foil looking ones. Found a little pen set made in Taiwan. So it's got some age to it. Oh, this was really interesting. I found um, some nativity scene figurines and stuff, but I also, in the midst of it, was this figurine. I've never seen a Boy Scout figurine before, which I thought was pretty cool. It's not marked or doesn't have anything, and I can't really tell if it's plastic. Um, it does look like his arm was broken, but it kind of seems like it's plastic, but, but yeah, so... That'll go down the pink elephant. We sell different figurines down there. Oh, found another pen set. These are actually, I believe, like a stone. And then they're engraved on the end. Somebody tried to sell them at the garage sale, obviously. And 
they didn't sell. But these say Eagle Coach Company. So somebody probably got these as a service award or something. But um, I just thought they were nice sets. Found a little vintage oil lamp. There was actually several of them. Um, and this was another one, but I couldn't find the top. And now I just noticed it's broken. I almost didn't get it. And I probably should have left it because it's broken right there. Didn't notice it. But I just love that one. It's so cool. Anyway. And then, um, oh, this was an interesting find. Sand from the Omaha Beach in Normandy, France. So somebody obviously bought it probably as a souvenir and visiting over there. Put it back and then donated it. Oh, I almost skewered myself. I found another one of these. Um, this is a receipt holder. This one is marked Nash, the National Cash Register Company. So that's kind of cool. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and then it's sold somewhere for $8 or somebody was asking $8 for it somewhere. It's got a price sticker on the bottom. So, and then, yep, these are the nativity scenes or figures. These are made in Japan. Um, and they were scattered out over several bins. They weren't all in the same bin, which I was looking for them in the same bin, but they weren't in the same bin. And again, I didn't get the complete set, but I did find enough. Yep, here's baby Jesus, Mary. Oh, <laughs> save that one for a minute. And then, um, plastic. oops, and then and there was a plastic camel, 10 cents originally at some, probably Ben Franklin or something. So the shepherds with a bent shepherd hook. And then uh, then there was these, these other two figures, Mary and Joseph, but no baby Jesus. These are woolen Japan figures. So it was a hodgepodge of nativity figures. Um, and then we also found some pocket warmers for the backpacks that we do for the homeless. And then... <laughs> I know we had this discussion a while back when I found a um, gum parker, the little cat figurine, where you could put your chewed gum on there and then come back and grab it later. Well, guess what? I found the teddy bear gum parker. <laughs> it doesn't say gum parker, but this, I believe, is a hobbyist piece, you know, like a Holland mold, something where you went to the ceramic class and painted it yourself. Because uh, on the back it says, Grandma, 1983. <sighs> So grandma made it for one of the grandkids. Um, but he's cute. So that'll go down the pink elephant. My The little cat sold right away. And then the last thing I got was this adorable little needlepoint bag. Somebody did an awesome job on making this bag. It's so well done. Um, and uh, it's an excellent shape. Doesn't show much where at all just a tiny bit on this corner um and that could be for me hauling all this stuff in it because it did hold a lot so it's double lined they got the outside liner and then they lined it again so it has the plastic showing on the inside as a liner but wow that was a great haul today um hope you guys enjoyed it and uh we'll catch you next time thanks